I am not what has happened to me. I am who I choose to become. And you see, there's so much power in that conscious decision. What most people are missing is a clear, vivid mental image of what they want themselves to be. I was first a, a consumer of this industry. Before I became a creator, I was like absorbing and listening and taking notes and implementing those things. Implementation is key. I see people in their 50s complaining about their parenting issues. Come on, grow up. It's you're 50 years old now. Stop blaming mom and dad. You're 50 for God's sake. Welcome to At A Crossroads, the YouTube series where we highlight inspiring stories of hope, resilience and perseverance. My guest today is Simarjit Singh, a leading international motivational speaker who's won the hearts of his audiences all over the world. Simarjit himself is a risk taker and a change maker. He left a promising career in the hospitality industry to follow his dream of becoming a motivational speaker. Welcome Simarjit. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Neha. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me and uh, congratulations on this wonderful initiative of starting this podcast. Thank you. And I have to start by saying, Simaji, that I'm a huge fan of your work. And I've watched, you know, a lot of your videos and I follow your social media posts. And um, I just love the way you, you know, uh, integrate short stories into your talks, which just makes it you <laughs> know, all the more relatable and motivating. So it's really an well, thank you. to have you here. Yeah, it's the it's the era of storytelling, isn't it? I mean, all the gyan is available on chat GPT anyway. So <laughs> now we will move on to stories. And, you know, if the stories of real experience of someone, even better. Yes, absolutely. So let me just begin by, you know, asking you about your incredible career journey. And, uh, you know, especially the bold career transition that you made from, you know, hospitality to becoming a motivational speaker. <laughs> So, you know, my, my journey, if, if I if I want to describe my career journey, I think let's trace it back to the education part. And it's unconventional, through and through unconventional. I uh, come from a family of doctors, a lot of doctors and then professors and, you know, teachers and administrators and um, things like that. So for me to not follow that medicine path was, first of all, a brave step in itself. And then... Um, then hotel management happened. A friend woke me up one fine summer morning after I'd come back from the gym and I was sleeping. He said, do you want to fill in these forms there for an entrance examination for hotel management? And we didn't know much about it. I said, OK, we'll just go check out what it is. That led me to an entirely different path. So I was I picked commerce. I topped in my city, by the way, in, in 10th, which was a surprise. Uh, you, you know, people have a lot of in, in, in English, you could spend five minutes describing the reactions of people. In Punjabi, we have one single expression. It's called hey. So when, <laughs> so when I when I topped my city in 10th, if the expression from all my teachers and everybody you knew me was like, hey, this guy. Right. And anyway, so my principal at that time of the school I was studying in said, you know, you've done pretty well. You should study non-medical. And I didn't know much. So I, I went with her advice. But then later on, I realized it was not to my liking. Thankfully, I changed that to commerce. A lot of eyebrows raised everywhere in the family. And uh, and then hotel management happened, which led me to a new world altogether. You know, the world of food and beverage service, of uh, preparing food, of serving food, customer service, how hotels run, of running reception desks and so many other things. And cleaning air conditioners and <laughs> learning about how a, a big hotel runs. And then I worked in the hospitality industry for eight years. I went to for higher studies to Australia in 1999. And after that, I um, worked in five different countries for the next eight years. In 2002, my dad was really terminally ill with cancer. Um, and I decided to return back to India just when my career was taking off. I was 21 at that point of time. And I, uh, you know, there was another change, an unexpected sudden change in the direction of my career. But then fast forward into 2007 is when I decided to leave this industry altogether and move on um, to doing what I'm doing now uh, as in motivational speaking and other things. That was 2007. So that's like a brief 
journey there. That's uh, that's amazing. But uh, so how would you describe the initial years, you know, like when you decided to shift from hospitality? It's it's definitely mm-hmm. not easy. So, you know, what were the challenges and were you at a crossroads ever when you started out? Mm, of course, I like crossroads. And I th- that's that's the name of your podcast thing, isn't it? I like crossroads. What you tend to do, I believe, is that you start to create uh, a mental space to think. You think about your life. You know, you begin to think. Instead of mindlessly repeating, you begin to think. And that's really um, a gift because when I, when I, in 2006, I believe, a year before I decided to make the leap, I started attending these seminars and reading books and listening to coaches. I was like, wow, there are whole institutions out there that teach you how to live your life well. I mean, there is no arithmetic being taught here, no geometry, no accounting, but they're teaching you how to lead a good life. I was like, wow, I was fascinated with this world now. Because, you know, they don't teach you this stuff in school and college. They, they teach you everything else. Can you really, you know, you can improve yourself. You can change yourself. You're not a prisoner of the thinking of the past, of your parents, of your, you know, the previous generation. You can reinvent. You can even reinvent your health, how you look, how you carry yourself, how you speak. All those things are not permanent. When I learned that, everything changed for me. It was very exciting. So I was first a a consumer of this industry before I became a producer. Right before I became a creator, I was like absorbing and listening and taking notes and implementing those things. Implementation is key to all of your viewers. I invite you to type that in the in the comment section. Implementation is key because you listen to so many ideas. Pick one that you like and implement it. And that's uh, you know if if you ask me what is going to be the most important part of this conversation here today. And I would like to ask all your viewers what they think is going to be the most important part of this conversation is what you will do afterwards. That will be the most important part is what you will do when you finish listening to our conversation here today. That's what would matter. And I started taking those principles to heart. I started implementing them. And yes, it was difficult. So transitioning from a hospitality guy who has studied hospitality, who has uh, worked who's built a career, right? Who has gained experience and now suddenly deciding to jump into something new. It's definitely not easy. It's not meant to be easy. If it's easy, everybody would do it. If it's easy to reinvent yourself, it's easy to transform yourself, everyone will do it. But it's not easy. But the thing is, so if if you ask me, were there times when I felt low or I doubted myself? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. But you set yourself up for motivation. Here's the thing. You have to set yourself up for motivation, which means you have to set a vision in your mind so that you're no longer dependent upon the words of other people or what's written in a book or what was taught in a seminar. Now the vision will push you because you have created a mental image. And this is the thing about the subconscious mind. Once you create a mental image, your entire mental physical faculties wake up to fulfill that image, to bring that image to life. What most people are missing is a clear, vivid mental image of what they want themselves to be. Yes, that's right. And I think this conversation is so relevant today because, uh, you know, post pandemic, uh, people, people have now realized, you know, their passions and people have realized that there is much more to life than, you know, what they were doing before, you know, before the pandemic hit. And uh, I think Mm -hmm. that change has really set in where people now, you know, it's not like, you know, the career that you've chosen, you have to stick with that, you know, all through your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you can change midway and you can follow your passion. It's never too late. And uh, but I do want to ask you that, you know, when you started out into a completely new career, did you face Mm -hmm. any criticism or, you know, skepticism from, you know, near and dear ones around you? No, of course. Of course. That's again, the same expression. Again, the same expression is called hey. <laughs> yeah, I, I want all of you to give the world more hey moments, you know, do stuff. <laughs> so, yes, they, they, they were a lot of, um, you know, but thankfully there was a lot of skepticism. There were a lot of people who were um, un, 
nervous about my decision and that's a weird part i wasn't nervous about my decision because people around me were nervous about my decision still happens you know you have to uh, this whole idea of safety in life you know want to is 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 um, i need to we need to challenge that as a society we need to um, you know be more bold try unconventional things and that really is the key um, so in fact from clients also till date till date it happens i'm based out of jalandhar in punjab it's a tier 2 city and ever since i relocated it was a conscious decision i want to go back to my hometown it's not my hometown but it's close by so the decision to be based here and the decision to pursue what i'm pursuing it did not it still does not fit into people's frame of reference you know we have a limited frame of reference which means a guy doing professional motivational speaking for the corporate section should be a mba or should have people still have which school did you go to or you know they have an expectation that i'm somewhere i'm going to fit in into their predictable model they they're trying to figure me out and in the process of figuring me out they want to put me in a box somewhere oh you know he he speaks so well so he must have been a product of that boarding school or must have gone to that school etc etc the answer is no uh or you know must have done an mba from a top notch b school the answer is no or must have done a lot of consulting or other sort of work before he decided to do this the answer is no and must be living in you know dubai bangalore san francisco etc the answer is no and um you know and that's what i like to do there is so much fun and thrill in challenging these boxes <laughs> that uh, it's 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 um it's a very fulfilling experience in itself and i think i hope this gives hope to other youngsters in this country sitting in tier 2 cities tier 3 cities rural parts people who come from humble middle class backgrounds like myself people who have struggled or seen their parents struggle in their life people who did not have the privilege of going to the top schools or the top b schools or the top whatevers right uh, people who did not have things served to them on a silver platter i hope this gives hope to them that um, you are what you decide to be you are not what society wants you to be you know you are what you decide to be and carl jung he said it, he said it beautifully he said i am not what has happened to me i am who i choose to become and you see there's so much power in that conscious decision i am not i am not what has happened to me i am not a product of my circumstances i am who i choose to become you know you talked about story so here's a short story in a village somewhere there's this man uh addict drunk fellow of, and um, father of two twins mother had passed away he was you know he was the only surviving parent and he was horrible he used to beat his kids up didn't didn't used to look after their needs he used to drink every day gamble everything away kids used to sleep hungry and it was a horrible horrible uh, existence for those kids this man this addict dies one day some village elder comes in and says okay we need to do something for these boys these these twins they've been through a lot so he decides to put them into two different orphanages in two different cities one guy goes to another city one the other brother goes to another city both raised under different set of circumstances all right old man comes to constantly keeps a check on them but after 25 years he wanted to meet them again to see what kind of men they have become now he was shocked to see that the first brother had just become exactly like his father he used to gamble all his money away he used to drink all the time you know criminal all the bad things that his father had he so he, he said how how come this this how how come did you end up like this he said you see sir my father was like this i i had no choice okay moves on moves on goes to the other city and sees the other guy has turned out just the opposite he's successful he's disciplined he is in good health he has good values he's in good shape and he asked him just like you're you're quizzing me today he asked him he said how what choices did you make and he said it was very simple my father was an alcoholic i had no choice 
I had no choice but to be this person that I am today. So same background, same challenge, same stimulus, but two people had different ways of perceiving it. I repeat Carl Jung, I am not what has happened to me, I am who I choose to become. And that's my message to everybody who's tuning in. It's who you choose to become. Location, irrelevant. Background, irrelevant. How your parents brought you up, irrelevant. All of those things, relevant to an extent, but you can't just live with that for the rest of your life. I see people in their 50s complaining about their parenting issues. Come on, grow up, it's you're 50 years old now. <laughs> Stop blaming mom and dad. You're 50 for God's sake. I understand you must have been through a lot of things. It must have been tough, but Maybe you, you know, you need to pay heed to what Carl Jung is saying. I am not what has happened to me. I am who I choose to become. And bad things happen to people. Bad things happen to people, right? I'm not condoning that. I'm not saying overlook that. But at the same time, understand you have the power to reinvent yourself, right? So here I am based in Jalandhar, doing what I'm doing, giving the world a lot of hair moments. <laughs> no, that's a beautiful message. And uh, so I wanted to, you. you know, uh, ask you that, uh, I mean, for people who are, you know, starting from scratch after being at the peak of their career, you know, at some point, how important do you think would financial stability be? There is no stipulation around this. This is reinvent this is what it is. You are saying, you are waving a red flag in front of the bull and saying, hey, you know, I'm up for this. If you want comfort, please keep your job and, you know, be nice to your boss and just do things you have to do. You want to reinvent, you will have to go through pain. You don't like the way your body is right now, you'll have to go through pain. You'll have to spend that time in the gym or workout or exercise. You don't like the um, the sort of networking you have, you'll have to go through pain. You'll have to attend boring parties or say hello to people in the gym or you know, whatever you have to do. You'll have to go through that pain. You want to pursue your inner calling, you will have to go through pain. You know, take small steps, experiment with it, but take action. You know what a lot of people do? They're like um, the pressure cookers in Indian households. You know what a pressure cooker does? If you put something to cook, maybe you're making a dal or something that needs slow cooking and you put it on in the morning and um, you leave it on and the steam builds up, the pressure builds up and fizz, and then and then it settles down, settles down again. And this is what we do. We, we friends, we meet for a coffee or for drinks and we let our steam off. Fizz. You know, I want to do this, I want to do that, I'm frustrated, blah, blah, blah. You have a friend who's listening and you're having coffee and, and then you settle down and go back into the old routine. You have to change the inputs if you want to change the outputs. It's as simple as that. You cannot continue living your life the way you're living and expect this will happen or that will happen. Now to specifically answer your question, not only your financial side of your business, it's going to impact everything, get ready for that. It's going to impact everything. If you're married, it's going to impact how much time you're able to spend with your spouse. If you have kids, it's going to impact how, how much will you be around for them. You know, because uh, transformation is a difficult process. It's a time-taking process, right? So it could positively also impact a lot of things. Let's say you want to consciously slow down and you were leading a very busy co corporate life earlier and now you have more time available and you might be a better father or a better mother now, right? So it, it could impact either way, but get ready. You're rocking the boat and you're doing it yourself. Nobody's asked you to. So be prepared, uh, go in lean, mean, hungry, be prepared. Just like, just like a little battle that you have to fight. You can't go uh, with a lot of baggage into that. And that brings me to the specific question that you asked. Shed the baggage of the past. I was at the peak of my consulting career and people just, that's a hangover they never get over. You have to get, take a cold shower, get a black coffee, get over the hangover. You were an ex IAS officer and now you're doing this. Well, good for you, but now it's a new ball game. The sooner you get over the legacy of what you were doing earlier, the better it will be for what you're doing now. 
the Japanese have a very powerful term for it. It's called the beginner's mind. Um, Shoshin, beginner's mind. The samurai warriors, they believe in it to stay humble in their skills as swordsmen. That they, they to approach every day as if this is the first day. You know, and that's the sort of humility you will need if you are to reinvent your career. Yeah. That's lovely. Um, so Simarjit, my last question to you would be like, you are a role model for a lot of people. And who's your role model? And is there any, you know, is there somebody who inspires you? Is there any quote you live by? I, I, I don't live, look up to a singular person for all the things that I want to have in my life or in my personality or in my outlook. There are multiple sources of influence, multiple thinkers, writers, sports persons, or, you know, philanthropists or people who have walked this earth before and done something. So <clears throat> I, I'm greedy that way. You know, I just don't want one person as my quote unquote role model. And I want to imbibe something from uh, everyone, different set of challenges people have. Are there quotes that I live by? Yes, I have a, a lot of them. There's a whole collection of quotes, of thoughts. And, you know, uh, very soon, um, and uh, my target is in the next six months or so, people will also be able to put their hands on a book that I want to compile from these quotes itself based on certain different subjects, whether it's on leadership or culture, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> My, what keeps me motivated and um, keeps me going on, on the path of what I'm doing is my daily uh, Gurbani prayer routine. So three to, th well, ideally three times a day to recite my prayers and not just recite them to understand the meaning behind them. Fills, fills me up with a lot of meaning and courage to continue walking on the path that I'm walking. And that's why I encourage, uh, that's what I encourage other people to do also is to have a mechanism to fill themselves up. Um, you know, just like you fill up your cars with fuel and other things, you need a mechanism to fill yourself up with positive energy, with wisdom and with the grit and determination. Could be anything, could be your morning gym routine, could be your morning walk, could be your meditation, could be anything. Uh, for me, it is my Gurbani Nith name routine. Thank you so much for coming on our show. It's been a pleasure, Neha. Thank you for inviting me and uh, keep on doing the good work that you're doing. I wish you and your team all the best. Thank you so much.